in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you are glorious. You are glorious in your Hello, Imadona. 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 And ask the Lord to give you a definite encounter tonight. Go ahead and pray. A definite encounter. Definite encounter tonight by the Spirit. Give me an encounter tonight that will change my life in the name of Jesus. I come to the one true God. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you. The one true God. Oh, oh.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. And the ark of your might And then we will rejoice As we clothe in your righteousness We celebrate your love Hilaba shalagosa de Worship him. You're not wasting your time. This is part of the meeting. Take your eyes away from men and just focus on Jesus. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. Lord, we worship. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we come to do. We are into the holy of holies. That's where we. Lord, this is why we are here. We have come with our hearts open, ready to receive from the rabbi of all the ages. We honor you, we worship you, we worship you. We pour our hearts like drink offerings before you. This is Mount Zion. The city of the living God. Hallelujah. 
in the name of Jesus the Bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion we thank the Lord for the privilege that he's given there is never a wasted moment in the presence of the Lord you can have wasted moments before men but not before the Lord the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says brethren I commend you unto God ah, there's such mighty presence in this place I'm just I'm just sensing just like an infusion of spiritual power just impartations of strength happening impartations because the Holy Spirit whenever he's here he's here to do us good I commend you he says to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have to understand and trust the value of God's presence one moment in his presence one moment in his presence can truly change your life hallelujah never be casual about the house of God never be casual about the Word of God never be casual about an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit has been allowed to find expression there is no telling how far God is able to lift to build to change to transform the house of God is not a cinema center the house of God is more than a lecture room the house of God is more than a place of disseminating information it is the house of God the gate of heaven what makes the house of God all important is that God is there hallelujah many things happen when you are in the presence of God there are healings there are miracles the word of God comes to deconstruct faulty belief systems in a moment in a twinkling of an eye an ideology you may have sustained for a decade that sponsors cycles of defeat in your life one word accurately explained from scripture can bring you that deliverance hallelujah and then there are impartations an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities whilst you are seated you see many things happen to us when we're in the presence of God more than the man who is speaking there is the God who is walking moving from row to row moving from place to place moving from hall to hall searching the intent the hunger the expectations of men and then coordinating words that come to heal to bless to deliver so whilst you are seated here you will be amazed to know the kind of ascendance that you're having in the spirit physically you may be seated but in the realm of the spirit there is an elevation happening to you it's a law the law of transformation the Bible says every time you truly behold you cannot remain at that level now the Lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty then it says we all with faces unveiled beholding the glory of God as in a mirror we are changed into what we are beholding the Word of God does not just tell you what God can do it brings you into that experience why am I saying this because you see routine creates boredom in men naturally and so lest we get used to just coming to honor a church service coming to honor a program it is dangerous to be casual in the presence of God 
Jacob said the Lord was in this place and I knew not as powerful as his presence is lack of hunger and expectation can make it look as though God was not there I never take his presence for granted no and so every time make it a culture let it be an education that you receive tonight that every moment you have to spend in his presence don't just say i am coming to church don't just say i am coming to hear a man of god don't just say i am coming to honor a meeting that was organized by a ministry it's more than that it is an encounter are we together this is very important I hope you know that this same presence that we seek is also sought after in heaven the same presence that we long for the angels and the saints in heaven live by that same presence it's not an inferior dimension that same presence that is the life-giving factor also in heaven Please do not be casual about the presence of God. More than healing, more than deliverance, more than people falling under the anointing, the laborious activity of the Holy Spirit transiting people into better and greater expressions of the power, the glory, the grace of God. This is his assignment. And I'm telling you, it takes a long time to achieve that in the spirit. This is why we gather and gather again. This is why we listen and listen again. This is why we learn and we learn again. Because it takes a long time to build. It takes a long time to produce men of stature. I stand, I stand in all of you. I bow, I bow in all of you. I see, I see in all. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you, Jesus, something special, Supernatural about your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah! Something happens when I mention you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God. One more time. You are God. From beginning to the end. Help us, O oh Lord, grant us understanding tonight. We open our hearts to learn, to grow, to be built, to be established in righteousness. Spirit of the living God, we pray that the word of God would come with power. And tonight, the spirit and the bride says, come. Come healing. Come lifting. Come transformation. The spirit and the bride says, come advancement come prosperity come fresh fire the spirit and the bride tonight are in agreement 
and we say come in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you give Jesus a big big hand amen praise the name of the Lord please be seated I'd like you to help me celebrate an awesome man of God in our midst tonight a veteran of the gospel apostle good heart thank you let's honor him koinonia this is a house of honor thank you sir thank you sir such an honor to have him in our midst amen please be seated i honor and celebrate everyone here politicians men of god um, businessmen all who name the name of christ the bible says we have all been called with a holy calling hallelujah praise the name of the lord i just felt stirred in my heart tonight to really reiterate and to remind us that we are as a global family we are a people of vision and we are a people of intention religion is man's quest to find the truth man's quest to find jesus and many times they come up with all kinds of ways and we have to be careful as we administer the life and the power of god because it is possible to just have the form of religion through the traditions of men and lose the power the presence and the life component may it never be that we get to a point where all we are doing is just a regular spiritual activity without power hallelujah it's important to know why we exist at the beginning of the during the inaugural service i took out time to share with us in great detail and paul said you see this is part of the apostolic ministry he says i will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things although ye know them and are established in this present truth hallelujah you should know you must know why we exist the vision is a system of check and balance it, it defines the coordinates of how we administer the life and the power of God it will always be and remain with respect to the call and with respect to the assignment so that all of the topics the teachings the approach everything comes in honor to the vision in honor to the goal this is how we achieve efficiency in the spirit hallelujah I thought would have the time to do a quick review on the six points that I gave us but we have to honor the time there's a lot to deal with here tonight is going to be quite an encounter for many of us here hallelujah and so I probably may ask media can we have a minute or two to do that is that possible all right so I hope you can see it they have beautifully expressed it in a way I'll just give you a minute or two to look at it I hope you can see it clearly you have to understand this is the sixfold mandate that we have everyone who is connected to this vision from this city and our global family it's important for you to know why we exist and it's important to know, help you know what we are about let me run it quickly in one minute number one to help actualize the global harvest of souls the mission of souls the global harvest of souls it is it is a global mission that we must not ignore hallelujah that we together with other members of the body we are about the genuine salvation of souls number two to equip and build believers unto maturity unto stature through the revelation of god's word the only way believers can grow and attain maturity is through the accurate exegesis the communication of doctrine doctrine is the course curriculum that builds believers it brings maturity and it brings stability number three god has also helped and anointed and ordained us to be instruments of completion and balance the body of Christ for a very long time has suffered different shades of imbalances that have delved into error, 
by well-meaning people and so the lord has raised us graciously and uniquely granted us access into superior dimensions of the counsel of god to the end that we be instruments that with the attitude of love and humility bring the body of christ to a greater sense of completion and balance number four to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of god through miracles signs and wonders bringing healings deliverances and transformation to men you have to understand this so it shouldn't be a thing of surprise when you see the demonstration of the spirit of the lord in all kinds of supernatural manifestations you have to understand that it is part of the grace and the equipping that we have received it doesn't have to be a miracle service anywhere we are gathered that grace speaks and it answers even now are we together number five to help strengthen the unity of the body of christ as you know i have said it again and again that i am sent to the body of christ and as a ministry even though organizationally speaking we may be a ministry or i don't know how we would look at it but then our assignment please keep that scripture there to send to bring unity to the body of christ there is such a state in the spirit called the unity of faith the bible says until we attain that point the unity of faith and finally to become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and please correct that that is national transformation national transformation media you'd want to just correct that national transformation any listen the bible says we are the light of the world the salt of the earth that means the the benefit of our spiritual encounters must not only help us spiritually but it must be translated into a context that blesses society the church is a blessing and an advantage to society it is an advantage to civilization so if a businessman or a politician a governor or a president or whoever if you sit under this grace it shouldn't just be that it is only your spiritual life that is growing your intelligence as far as leadership and governance must also be affected are we together i believe in the power of influence and god has so honored us with great men and women of influence captains of industry politicians i owe you a duty under god to see that in addition to your spiritual growth you are equipped with the tools by the spirit reference from scripture that can help us to bring the kind of leadership that can transform society neither do men light a lamp it says and to put it under a bushel but you put it on top of the lampstand and it gives light to all those who are in the room that means there were people in the room even when there was darkness confused waiting for whoever is the light hallelujah this is very important we are about this week in week out all of our arms of expression all of the platforms in the ministry work in synergy to the end that this six point vision be achieved if for any reason and by any means we deviate from this then we're wasting our time the grace and the backing of god remains for as long as we are committed to this unified task the bible says write the vision it mandates to make it plain so that he will run that reads it are we together over the next few weeks I'm going to be having very powerful and special teachings uh, and these teachings will be along the areas of all the graces that God has so graciously allowed to be at work in my life and in this ministry it is important for you to understand the graces that God has so invested in this ministry so that you can become a partaker but you see grace is administered through knowledge so there must be a, an accurate exegesis of the scriptural basis 
for the reception of these graces it is not just by mere impartation impartation will be fruitless if there is no understanding that supports it it first starts with water before it turns to wine it doesn't start with wine it is first water then it turns to wine are we together and i'm excited about the things that we're going to be learning i am a student of the wisdom of others i am a student of uncommon men and women who have been used by god across the earth over the years some dead some alive and so we are not inventors of these truths it would be arrogant to invent something at this level and and attempt to communicate it to such an intelligent people the things that we teach are not opinions the things that we teach have been tested they have been vetted by the integrity of god proven in the lives of those who have gone ahead of us to the end that we have the certainty of those things that we have believed luke chapter 4 please verse 1 to 4 and then we'll begin our discourse for tonight luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4 luke chapter 4 luke chapter 1 please forgive me luke chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 i meant to say for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us please look up please go back to verse 1 the bible says for every body of believers there are certain spiritual truths that are called most surely believed every truth should be believed but according to the measure of grace and the dimension of the investment of the spirit given there are certain truths that the average person in this ministry should have as a settled conviction can you imagine someone still doubting the reality of healing in a healing ministry can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the blessing of the lord under the ministry of kenneth copeland can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the power of faith under the ministry of someone like Papa Hagin or our father in the Lord Bishop David Oedipo? You, it, it, it's an anomaly. So there are things called the truths that are most surely believed. We're reading to verse 4. Verse 2, please. Even as they delivered them to us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word please celebrate reverend akila and his dear wife <laughs> blessings to you and good to see you sir hallelujah amen even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse 3 it says it seemed good to me also here is an apostle saying it is possible for a man to have perfect understanding you can have perfect accurate understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you in order most excellent theophilus why verse 4 please let read in concert one to read that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed that you no longer believe it just because you like the man of god teaching it but you catch the revelation of that truth yourself there are many people who believe truths not because they have gotten the revelation they like and they trust the communications of that truth as well meaning as that is it's not sufficient to produce results in your life remember what the woman at the well said come see a man she invited them they came on her invitation but when they encountered Jesus, they told her, they said, we believe not because you brought us. We have tasted of this thing for ourselves. And like a chef preparing a meal to ensure that there is balance, there is growth, there is stature. Life applicable truths that I say, amen. amen. So tonight we are discussing the spirit of wisdom. the spirit of wisdom revelations chapter 5 and verse 12 may the lord transform our lives mightily and marvelously so saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive this was the praise of the four and twenty elders 
Jesus did not die for them. They were speaking on our behalf to receive for us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Seven spiritual realities that were purchased for us in redemption. And one of them is wisdom. One of them is wisdom. The Bible tells us that wisdom is not just a psychological attribute. There is a, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit can find expression in the life of a man and a people as wisdom. Isaiah 11 and verse 12. Verse 1, to put it in context. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, he says, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Then he begins to list what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the seven spirits of God or the sevenfold manifestation because it is one and the same spirit. You read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says all of this diversity of operations are done by one and the same spirit. And so he gives us a list of the sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Number one, the spirit of the Lord talks of authority and dominion. Number two, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Number three, the spirit of counsel and might. Then number four, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. But now we are discussing the spirit of wisdom. In Ephesians chapter one, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus, part of his apostolic ministry. Let's go to verse 17. In Ephesians chapter one, from verse 17, Paul began to pray. And here was the content of his prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, even the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. So immediately we see that the spirit of wisdom is given. It is not something that that dimension of wisdom is not something you learn, it's not something you fish out from the earth, it is given. Are we together? Write this down, please. There is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon the life of a believer as the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit can manifest in the life of a believer as the spirit. Wisdom is the secret behind the exploits of men in this kingdom. Wisdom, the secret behind the exploits of men. In Deuteronomy was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him as a result of that wisdom the children of Israel hearkened unto him the same way they did to Moses that means they did not just listen to Moses because he was called Moses there was this manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that reflected itself in uncommon leadership the same spirit came upon Joshua psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 we're learning tonight it says thou through thy commandments had made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me we're reading to 100 it says i have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation last verse it says i understand more than the ancient because i keep thy precepts there is such a state where a man can access a level of spiritual intelligence and wisdom that is above and beyond that which this realm affords show us the ancient paths Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Psalms 104 and verse 24. I'm showing you from scripture that the wonder working power of God's wisdom in the life of a believer is the principal secret behind exploits in this kingdom please read with me it's projected ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy works uh-huh in wisdom 
thou hast made them all in wisdom thou hast made these manifold things in wisdom you have produced this uncommon level of results hallelujah it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes more than a sincere heart to excel in life it takes more than a godly conscience to excel in life there are many well-meaning people who love jesus christ with all their heart born again but it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes god's dimension of wisdom to bring about exploits it takes god's dimension of wisdom generally any kind of wisdom brings you in a position of advantage above the normal human being you'll be learning that there are different kinds of wisdom but i tell you from the authority of scripture any then god's dimension of wisdom will grant you access to results that defy common sense results that defy logic this is the realm god has called us into hallelujah are we together so it takes wisdom every time you see the exploits of an individual in ministry exploits in business exploits in governance any kind and any dimension of exploits i submit to you by the authority of the word of god that behind every command every uncommon result is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom if you're with me say amen, amen. the absence of the spirit of wisdom is costly it leaves you to the frailty of your intelligence it leaves you to the frailty of your perceptions the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is one of the systems of advantage that was given to the saints to help us manifest the fullness of the life and the power of god the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 this is why god gave us all these great blessings it says um verse 10 really not 9 3 to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of god there is a display of wisdom that god desires for creation to see what then is wisdom please write this down those following online following from whatever tv station just make sure that you have your note or you have something to just write or pen down this information they are valuable the bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh what is wisdom i'll first give you the dictionary definition of wisdom and then we'll explore our definition based on scripture the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience knowledge and good judgment so the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience the quality of having knowledge and the quality of having good judgment it also refers to the ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and sound judgment the dictionary also says that wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge that you have and the experience that you have to make good decisions and sound judgment james chapter 3 please before i give you the kingdom definition of wisdom which is an addition to this that we already have james chapter 3 and verse 13 the bible lets us know that there are principally four kinds of wisdom there are four kinds of wisdom that the bible identifies now um maybe psychology or some sort of some field of philosophy may come up with different angles but we are teaching and the reference of our teaching and spiritual communication is scripture 
Are we together now? So this is by no means an attempt to, to downplay the intelligence of those who are authorities in the area of philosophy, but you need to understand that the basis of our communication is scripture. And so every truth that we bring is derived from the authority of scripture. It says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Right? 14. It says, but if ye have bitter envies and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. It says, there is this wisdom that descended not, this wisdom descended not from above. So there is a wisdom that does not come from above but is earthly number one that is the first kind of wisdom that the bible officially identifies there is earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom i'll explain that in a moment number three there is devilish wisdom there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish wisdom next verse and then it says for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work 17 but then the last kind of wisdom the bible says is the wisdom that is from above there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish or demoniacal wisdom and then there is wisdom that comes from above please write this down what is earthly wisdom earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom what you call common sense the the inherent ability to recognize right or wrong earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom common sense that sense of intuitiveness the ability to recognize right or wrong instinctively that is natural wisdom or earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom this has to do with your faculties of perception this is scientific wisdom this is philosophical wisdom wisdom that has come through studies wisdom that has come through experiments this is the second level of wisdom it's called sensual wisdom scientific philosophical wisdom that comes through studies wisdom that comes through experiments and then number three we have devilish or demonic wisdom what is that a sense of superior judgment that is outsourced from your fraternity with demon spirits there can be a sense of superior judgment a sense of judgment that is higher than the natural man's own but does that it was outsourced through your fraternity with demon spirits the kind of wisdom that comes through your alliance your fraternity and your covenant with demon spirits and then the bible tells us finally that we have the manifestation of wisdom that comes from above what is that godly wisdom supernatural wisdom the wisdom that comes as an impartation by the spirit of wisdom godly wisdom supernatural wisdom is god helping us hmm. let's define wisdom now from a kingdom perspective please write this down number one wisdom is defined as the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge now that you know these things happy are you if you do them the accurate application of knowledge or information number two wisdom is the supernatural ability listen carefully 
the supernatural ability to use the written or inspired word of God to make accurate decisions and provide solutions to life's problems. I will take it again. Just be patient. The supernatural ability to use the written, both the written and inspired word of God to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems. This is called wisdom. It is a supernatural ability, the faculty, the fortitude, the ability to take advantage of the truths found in the written word and the inspired word that comes through the spirit that it helps you to make accurate decisions and then by it you provide supernatural solutions to life's problems. This is called wisdom. Wisdom is related to advancement. Wisdom is related to wealth. Wisdom is related to exploits. This is very important. The Bible lets us know that a man can be alive and yet lack wisdom. That means the same way a doctor can diagnose a patient and say you have deficiency of calcium. You are alive. You are not dead. You are still alive. But there is deficiency of calcium, deficiency of magnesium, and that component is in a drug or some kind of treatment given to you. And as you swallow those pills, you are taking into your system the magnesium or the calcium that you do not have. It can come in form of food. It can come in form of a pill. But whilst you take it, you are aware that the calcium that I lack, I'm now taking it in. And usually they would give you a few indices that can help you know that that which you did not have has now arrived. Listen carefully. You can actually look at your life as a report card and you can know whether or not there is the presence of wisdom. And if you find out that there is the absence of wisdom, the Bible also leaves us with a strategy to transport wisdom from wherever it is into your life. Now, this is powerful. But you have to admit that men can lack wisdom. James chapter 1 and verse 5. We'll go, back, we'll go back to that scripture, but just to let you know from scripture. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, just stop there. Forget about what you do later on, but that there is a possibility that a man can walk on earth. A man of God can lack wisdom. A businessman can lack wisdom. A politician can lack wisdom. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. The same way a car as wonderful as that car is it can lack fuel when the car does not have the gas that moves it forward it remains at that position everyone say wisdom so wisdom is the supernatural ability to take advantage of the truth from god's word both written and inspired and they now guide you to make excellent decisions in life and by the principles you are able to come up with supernatural solutions that attend to the needs first your need and then the need of those around you that any man who is able to attain this state is considered from scripture to carry the spirit of wisdom may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus christ hallelujah so we understand that as a result of redemption one of the sevenfold prophetic reality the blessings that have been given to the saints in christ one of them is wisdom and that more than just a gift of wisdom more than just the word of wisdom there is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom how to access wisdom We're on a journey right now like spiritual archaeologists let us find where this wisdom is seeing that the presence of wisdom is the secret to an excelling life an excelling ministry an excelling family an excelling business even an excelling spiritual life 
it then means that anyone who is serious with God and serious with destiny must search for this wisdom wherever it is and that when you find it because the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing we're getting there shortly it says in all you're getting get wisdom get understanding he said exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her look at wisdom speaking to you he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early those who love me they will find me there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom lack of wisdom is costly especially in the world that we live in today follow me please to the book of job job 28 be patient and i'd like you to carry the determination of an archaeologist as we study this scripture we are searching for wisdom we want to find it and so desperately open our hearts to embrace it are you ready surely mm, Job is speaking now. How many of you know that there is a dimension of wisdom that comes through pain? When you suffer beyond the threshold, there is an impartation. The haziness that foolishness brings can be eroded through the presence of pain. This man, at this time, he's lost everything. His reputation, whatever it is. Sometimes you just need to lose all these things. The prodigal son, provided he had supplies, his wisdom began to diminish until he got to a point where he was feeding with the swine. The Bible never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. The Bible said he came to himself. Look the kind of wisdom that came out of that pain. Surely there is a vein for the silver and there is a place for gold where it is found. Is that true? Do we agree with this statement of course there are gold mines there are silver mines it says iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone uh-huh he set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfections the stones of darkness the shadows of death next verse please it says the flood breaketh out from the inhabitants you know and they are dried up they are gone away from men it's a long reading just be patient it says as for the earth out of it cometh bread good information for you you're searching for where bread is the bible tells you it's not in a bakery bread is found from the earth that means there is something you can do to the earth to command and force your portion out of it let me tell you what this means this is not where i'm teaching i just thought it was a point i should not let to just pass like that this earth is not just talking of the ground it's also talking of men that the secret to your bread is men so when god wants to give you bread he brings you to encounter men next verse verse six and the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold there is a path which no fowl know it you know how high the fowl can fly but it says there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and the vultures eye hath not seen the lion's whelps have not trodden it nor the fierce lion passed by it remember what we are looking for we are looking for the location of wisdom he put it forth his hand upon the rock he overturned the mountains by the roots uh-huh he cut it out rivers from among rocks and his eyes see it every precious thing keep reading he binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden he brings forth to light verse 12 it says but where shall wisdom be found so look 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 the look the 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 artistry of job he begins by showing us where some of the things we admire on earth he says their location has been found we don't have a problem looking for where gold is where silver is where iron is men have used advanced technology to excavate rocks to find minerals but there is a particular spiritual resource we are still looking for and job said where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding hmm. Our journey begins it says man knoweth not the price thereof 
neither is it found in the land of the living that means cbn does not have it that means our institutions do not have this kind of wisdom it already gives you a clue that as you begin this archaeological journey let me tell you where not to waste your time expo it is not found in the land of the living there is a kind that is found in the land of the living but not this one next verse the depth saith it is not in me find other minerals but not this one the sea do you know what is hidden in the sea abundance in the earth hides in the sea the bible says but this wisdom the sea says among the resources that were hidden there this one is not part of them hmm. the bible says it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof it cannot be valued with the gold of offer and the precious onyx or the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and you are not looking for it it says and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls it says for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold we're still looking for wisdom whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding hallelujah seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and it is kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of its fame come on look at the testifiers of the exploits of wisdom that destruction and, and death came to hold a mic and give a testimony that as we go around destroying people we have heard of this wisdom the fame we have heard of it that anyone who possesses this can beat us hands down we have heard of the fame thereof here is your answer god understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof so after confusing us and leading us from pillar to post he now tells us that listen there is no archangel that holds this wisdom that god only god knows the way of wisdom and he is the exclusive custodian of this priceless commodity the wisdom that comes from above the wisdom that comes from above please pay attention i have seen people who carry in bodily form the spirit of wisdom i have seen people manifest natural wisdom i have seen people manifest scientific and philosophical wisdom with the various degrees of results that supports the kind of wisdom they carry i have also seen people access demonic wisdom but I have seen a few people and I'm glad that this happened in my lifetime. People who access superior levels of wisdom. Many years ago, as the Lord was preparing me for ministry, I listened to Pat Robertson, the founder of 700 Club, CBN. And he said as a young man, when he was about to start ministry, he prayed for three things. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor number three give me the anointing of the holy ghost i wrote it down quickly and i prayed the same prayer too i said lord i don't trust this my head i don't trust what i know give me wisdom number two give me favor and number three give me the anointing of the holy spirit and then the holy ghost spoke to me he said follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise the proof of passion is pursuit and i began that journey aware of the 
the many shades of ignorance and lack of wisdom in my life i admitted the fact that if this kind of wisdom cannot be found it automatically or just because you have answered the call of god you have it automatically i don't mean to insult your pedigree but i present to you a the all surpassing excellence of this wisdom can be felt pray and say father let me encounter the spirit of wisdom tonight give me an encounter this wisdom can only be found in god only be found in god for the way of the lord the lord I'm tired of my current results oh god for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of i want to show you you see everything that comes from god even though it is a gift it has conditions in the cheapest and the greatest gift in as much as it is a gift romans chapter 8 from verse 10 from verse 8 down to 12 tells us that there is a condition in fact many conditions at a personal level the condition is that you believe with your heart confess with your mouth the lord jesus and then you are saved it says for with the heart man um confesses with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation is that true and then when you go down to i think verse 15 it begins to say even this man you see how shall they go to verse 14 please it says how shall they call on him whom they have not believed so believing is the key to calling on him and how shall they believe if they have not heard hearing is the key to believing and how shall they hear without a preacher so a preacher is the key to hearing not just the word of god a preacher is the key to hearing i am the voice he is the word but i am the voice that cries and then next verse says how shall they preach except they be sent so you are sent to preach you preach they hear they hear they believe they believe they call upon god they call upon him they receive salvation this is how it works according to scripture mm. are we blessed there are conditions to access the spirit of wisdom number one now please look up let me just teach you something before we delve into this Actor of scripture to hide spiritual possibilities in the life and the stories of men are we together now that means every time you begin to search for a dimension of spiritual reality your first element for instance is to understand the blessing of the lord and god's idea of what it means to be blessed in this kingdom then you go to isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 and 2 that is the biblical recommendation it says to look unto abraham verse 2 your father and to sarah that bore you for i call him alone and blessed him and increased him that means to understand my idea of a blessed man understudy abraham if you want to understudy the ministry of prayer the bible takes you in james chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 18 it now brings you to this personality called elijah it says elijah was a man of like passion so you use the person elijah to understand the power of prevailing prayer are we together now if you seek encounters and you want to understand the protocol to a spiritual encounter the bible tells us that the personality the go-to personality is this man called jacob in chapter 28 of genesis chapter 32 of genesis then chapter 24 of psalms this is the generation of them that seek thee they, that seek thy face O jacob king james says but the original translation says oh god of jacob so god recommends the encounter of jacob as the protocol for finding him are, are we learning now yes you don't blindly begin to search for truths just like that 
they are personified if you are learning favor you want to see the power of god's deliverance that god is able to deliver men the nation of israel from egypt is the classic expression of deliverance so you understudy what did they do number one they were in captivity how did god help them he brought a man trained that man are we together now by signs and wonders he brought them out through his mouth his mighty hands The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning, so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. So now we are discussing wisdom. It is only wise and obvious that we re make reference to the personality that was identified from Scripture as the wisest man, second only to Jesus Christ. Is that true? So we're going to understudy the life of Solomon, the man that the Bible says is the wisest man. Because once upon a time, he did not have the manifestation of wisdom. So what happened? First Kings chapter 3. Shilaks kapranda katuski adabakata. Verse 3. The first condition to access the spirit of wisdom please do not miss this is that you must have passionate love for god and for his program passionate love not just love passionate love for god the spirit of wisdom comes not just upon prayer warriors but genuine lovers of god not users of god not church goers not just bible study giants but lovers of god no eye has seen no ear has heard the bible says neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that god has in store for them that love him but he has revealed it to them by his spirit so the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is a love affair as we learn from this reference solomon read with me please verse 3 one to read and solomon loved the lord hold on he never said and solomon wanted wisdom he didn't say solomon wanted fame he didn't say solomon wanted a name solomon loved the lord notice the two people that are references of wisdom the bible starts by telling us of their love life for god so loved the world he gave his son as proof of love solomon now also loved it's interesting that true wisdom starts with love and solomon loved the lord walking in the statutes of david his father is that true only he sacrificed born incense in high places and then the second condition very quickly if you want to access wisdom you must have a sincere desire please keep that scripture there number one passionate love for god and his agenda number two you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing the spirit of wisdom cannot come on an individual who is not committed to being a blessing because wisdom manifests itself in supernatural solutions that bless all and sundry so there must be a passion and a determination in your heart you want the spirit of wisdom to come and elevate you in business in ministry in politics in every area of your life you must have a passion to be a blessing let's read verse um we're going to begin to read from verse 8 and 9 we'll come back but then let's just look at it verse 8 and 9 now in fact let's just start from verse 4 down to 9 media help us it says the king went to gibeon and to sacrifice there for that was the great high place and the bible says a thousand bond offerings did solomon offer upon that altar uh -huh. next verse in gibeon the lord appeared to solomon in a dream by night and said ask what i will give thee this ladies and gentlemen was the ultimate test of selflessness and a desire to be a blessing it is not an angel saying you should ask it is the god of the bible who has everything 
perhaps if i was the one who was asked that i would say god get a notebook you don't know where i'm coming from get a notebook hmm. the lord said ask what i shall give thee verse 6 and solomon said hallelujah look at the expression of selflessness the determination to be a blessing thou hast showed unto thy servant david my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day uh-huh so he's talking about rulership and now O lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead of my father david and i am but a little child ah this man knows what to do with god there is there is a language that when you use with god eh, you are ready to receive something from him i am but a child i know not how to go out or how to come in because it is wisdom that gives direction he's saying i am void of wisdom and i admit it there's no need spending my life experimenting and returning back in pain then verse 8 and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people he said that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude verse 9 here was his request give therefore thy servant an understanding heart what for to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this this so great thy people notice he did not he keep that scripture there please he didn't ask for himself my brothers and sisters i've had a few encounters with the lord and i can tell you this there are kairos moments where when you have an opportunity that's when the flesh will say you better say it quickly speed promotion all kinds of things the life of my enemies and god was listening to the lord the, the solomon and solomon said lord i desire an understanding heart what we call wisdom and the reason why i need it is because of my passion to be an effective leader my passion to be a blessing can i tell you this everything that god gives you flows through you but should not stop with you if it stops with you even though he gave you it will kill you listen to what i'm telling you everything god gives you provided it came from god it flows through you and you will benefit from it but ultimately it must move past you if god gives you an anointing if god gives you wealth if god gives you influence if he gives you increase if he gives you intelligence a platform whatever it is when he sends a word to jacob his intent is that it gets to israel are we learning so you must have a desire to be a blessing please say after me in the name of jesus shout it if you can't say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be passionate about being a blessing i look beyond myself hmm. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye